Hi YouTube, this is Patrick and this is my review of Breaking Bad Season 5, Episode 5. It was my favorite episode so far this season, which I said last week, and I'm very happy to say it again this week. Alright, the cold open was as weird as the cold opens usually are, except this one, it was just like this huge guessing game of like, what's gonna be a part of the end of the episode here? Like, I thought maybe, is this tarantula gonna be crawling over some dead body? and then crawl over to the boy eventually. Is this boy gonna have something to do with it? Uh, it was just really, really strange. You just knew it was gonna go somewhere. You just didn't know where. And um, also we were joking. I was sitting watching with uh, with two friends last night and we were joking that we heard the train in the background. We're like, oh, it's the Hell on Wheels, you know, train or whatever like that. But um, Obviously, that became more important later on when we saw the train. We kind of all freaked out. We were just like, oh, that's it, the train, oh, you know. So, yeah. All right, before I get into the whole train robbery thing, um, I'll just start with, I guess, Walt and Hank, the scene where Walt walked into Hank's office. It, uh, I like that Hank right away noticed Walt's watch and just kind of... I mean, he's not figuring out Walt, but he's... You know, he thinks so, he's got to think something isn't right with... He just kind of went, huh, you know, how about that? You know, you bought another thing for yourself and, and stuff like that. But I, I got to see the whole scene work with him just crying in front of Hank was just, Cranston's awesome. He, uh, he didn't, you know, I knew he was, like, bullshitting, but he still almost made me kind of think, like, wait, is he, like, actually sad about what happened? Or is he, you know, like, is it a little bit of both here or not? Which doesn't matter, because it's all just bullshit anyway. Okay, the whole thing with planting the bugs in the, the room... It kind of encompasses the whole thing with Walt this season, where he is brilliant as he as he's always been, with you know getting Hank out of the room to get him coffee to you know plug the thing into the computer and then use the picture, something that normally you know, you would never open. You if you love a picture, it just sits there. You never really open the back of it. And just the the thing at the end where Hank walked into the room and Walt was able to you know just pretend he was looking at the picture. It's quick thinking. It's brilliant, but like this season and like stuff with this episode it's careless because he's leaving it up to chance too the you know someone could knock that picture over also just as easy just as easily as I, as I just said that you, know, you would never open a picture like that especially one that you love but you you know someone could knock it over and then it's all it's all done it's over plus you know Hank may see the thing he put on the computer unless Walt took it off I don't think he did so no well, he definitely didn't take it off so, yeah, these are all things that I see. They're all things that are just going to be coming back to him, I think, by the, by the end of the season, pretty much. Okay, Hank and Marie with uh, Walter Jr. and Holly. I think it was really... It was nice to see how awesome Hank and Marie would be as parents for, you know, Holly. And it almost, I think, proved the point that Skyler should, talk, should just turn Walt in. Because... As of right now, if she does, yes, Junior may be traumatized. Yes, you know, Marie may be, you know, traumatized and Hank and all that stuff. But they, you know, Holly wouldn't. You know, Hank and Marie would be able to at least take care of her. At least she would be in good hands. And eventually Walter Junior would be, you know, out of danger. He would be, you know, upset, obviously. But, you know, maybe with time he could get through it. The thing right now, I mean, the other, only other way is Skylar just doesn't want to, you know, she wants to spare them all that pain, but the problem is, it could be so much worse. And it's a tough decision, but it's, it's kind of just looking at how good Hank and Marie would be, you know, to both of those kids, it kind of makes it sadder, I think, that Skylar can't do it, because I don't think it's going to work out for the better. Yeah, at all. And by the way, Walter Jr., what the hell is wrong with uh, some lasagna and watching Heat on Blu-ray? What's wrong with that? Why, it wasn't, wasn't bacon and eggs, that's why? Fucking breakfast nut. The scene with Walt and Skyler was... I like how it was very different from last week, and it kind of, again, showed what I said last week was Walt's weakness still, or when he's not Heisenberg, is his kids. He, you know, he was, Junior was there, and Skyler thought he would, Walt was just going to say, like, hey, you know, welcome back, this, that, and the other, but 
Walt saw, saw how upset Junior was, and he kind of saw that the only real option was to let him go back out. Because even if he stays, he was just going to be upset and asking questions and everything like that, and he couldn't have that, at least right now. So he got him out of the house, and, and I think, again, because it is his weakness that he does not want to hurt his kids. And it's got to be somewhere deep down in there that he knows what he's doing is, is messed up. It's just not, you know, the light bulb just isn't flashing that bright, or that one in particular. And I like how Skylar was talking to him, and Skylar knows that she can't get him, you know, obviously to you know, break to her will, but she can maybe at least bend him and make him you know, very calmly, you know, make a deal. When I say break, I didn't mean a pun or anything like that. I hate puns. But, yeah. Also, a great line at the end of the scene with uh, Skylar taking a jab at him, saying, I go, where, where are you going to, you know, bury some bodies? And he's like, no, train robbery. It's so bad when, instead of throwing back another insult at her, he just told her the truth. And that's like the biggest insult of all. The worst thing of all is what he's really doing. Okay, moving on with Lydia and uh, the scene where she was held captive. I love Mike just like messing with her and just making her get the details. So I was like, no, I said pistol. I like how they, the three of them, whenever they huddled up, when Lydia was sitting there, I like how, I, I just kind of call the three, I think I'm going to call them the Bermuda Triangle from now on. Because they're just uh, a shitstorm, basically. You know, or the Three Stooges, except they're all curly. But uh, the whole thing with figuring out that it wasn't Lydia that planted everything, but that it was, you know, the police or everything like that. Or, I guess it was a DA or DEA or something. I'm not, I, I don't really remember. That, that felt a little contrived. There's a little like, you know, like, oh, look, we fooled you. You thought it was Lydia, and now it isn't. So that eh, is a little whatever. Plus, I don't really like Lydia that much. But at least she was able to do something for them. At least she was able to, you know, show them, you know, talk to them about the whole train robbery. And I like that, once again, Jesse was the smart one. It really shows Jesse's growth from the beginning of the show as, you know, as a person and just his intelligence. And maybe it's him being around Walt and picking up off that intelligence and all, all the bad stuff, too. But it's, uh, I just love the fact that Jesse is, like, the, the person of ideas this season while the other two old guys just bicker. The entire train robbery thing was just like Ocean's Eleven meets the Wild West and it was completely awesome. The show, you know, always has a Western kind of feel to it or, well, just because it is in New Mexico and everything like that. And I thought, I thought this episode was the best, one of the best looking episodes they've ever done. Just, um, just the way they use the colors, the look of the sky, you know, the sun and just like, you know, the dirt and everything, the train tracks, the way Walt looked with his little Heisenberg hat on and the other two, just all the angles, just beautifully, beautifully directed. Once again, though, the whole train robbery thing, it completely proved that these guys are absolutely brilliant and completely in over their head. The whole thing was so well staged, so well done, and well planned out by the show. We always knew where someone was and what the situation was and everything like that. But they are so fragile. They are so fragile, and it takes just, you know, just the smallest thing. Like, it almost got messed up just because of uh, the, other, the other driver showing up, which I knew they were going to do something. But the plan, I hope, was nice. The plan did really sort of go off without a hitch. Uh, although I was getting worried for Jesse sitting under the, the train, and then more worried when the train started moving. And, uh, you know, come on, Walt, you didn't need to get to a 1,000. Just the obsession of it again. But it was great suspense, and it was a, it was just a, an absolute blast. It was one of the most like fun episodes they've done. But it was fun until the ending. The ending was it just basically cast this huge dark cloud over this very very fun episode. And now when you rewatch the episode, you'll rewatch the you know you'll watch the opening, and just right away you'll just have you know this like awful feeling throughout the entire episode. Um, I was waiting for something to go bad, and the second the kids showed up. You know, I didn't know if they were going to leave it at that or... Because I didn't know any of them really had a gun on them. I didn't really see anything. It, it obviously makes sense that they did. But that, you know, that asshole, whatever, Todd, a jerk, just, you know, point blank, just shot him. And um, that is absolutely, I think, maybe the worst thing that these guys have done. And it's, it's interesting to think about it. Like, everything that Walt's done, when you think about, you know, the stuff with Jane... Jane was bringing Jesse down with him, and she was, you know, in the way of things. It was still terrible, but she was, you know, hurting Walt's, I guess, business and Walt, just everything, and blackmailing him and everything like that. Gail, Gail, you can look at it and say, like, oh, Gail was innocent, but Gail, 
you know, was a part of the business. He was in the meth business, so that's it. So, you know, guilty. Um, and even everything, you know, with Andrea's brother, like, sh you know, that was out of their control. That was Gus that did that, and Gus's people. Everyone else that Walt's killed or something like that, it's been either inadvertent or it's been done for good reason. Even the poisoning of Brock, he did it because he had, look, it's awful. He did it because he had to, but also he didn't kill the kid. He knew he, well, I guess he was pretty sure the kid was going to be safe. It was going to be all right. He's still an asshole, but this is different. This was you know, an innocent kid that just wanted to, you know, pick up a, find a spider and take it home. And he just died. You know, it, it was just bad luck for this child. And the blame doesn't just fall on Walt. It's on, you know, all of them. Jesse, too, because Jesse kept saying, you know, yeah, they all agreed, can't leave witnesses. <clears throat> can't leave witnesses. So the blame is on all of them now. It's not just Walt. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how it affects everybody. I'm sure it'll affect Jess <clears throat> Jesse the most, but still, just really, really, really messed up. And uh, just put the biggest, you know, exclamation point on, on a great episode. And, uh, yeah, I love it. I'm pissed we have three, only three to go. I can't really even see what the end game is for these last three episodes, but I'm sure it's something major. And, um, yeah, so I can't wait. All right, that's it, guys. I will talk to you next week, and uh, adios.